Well, here we are. This will be the, the little uh, broadcasted corn spot of this year. Last year I had broadcasted corn right out there closer to the road. Basically, almost up to these white flags, probably like right in here is where I'll be putting the uh, Nutri-Crave corn. This is a non-Roundup Ready corn, so whatever I plant today, I'm gonna spray with Simazine. So there's the Nutri-Crave corn. That's what Nutri-Crave looks like. And uh, last year when we had that corn out there, um, the deer didn't really eat on it much. Um, then nothing really winters back in here. It's just not a big enough area to hold them during the winter time. But uh, this Nutri-Crave is supposed to be so much more attractive to deer, higher um, fat content, higher protein content. And it's just supposed to be really attractive for the deer. So having this little test plot right here, we'll really see the difference between the field corn last year and the Nutri-Crave this year. Only thing I'm worried about is last year, all these fields around here were all corn, or this year they're all beans. So this little Nutri-Crave plot, my sweet corn plot, might even might just get hammered by the coons. But the field across the road over there is all um, corn. So maybe all the coons in the river bottom right over there will just eat on that stuff, hopefully. I don't know. But all of this and the field over there is all uh, beans this year. Where last year it was all corn. That's why my corn in here was, was untouched. You can see I had some corn in here too. This is going to be a clover no-till clover today i seeded in a bunch of winter rye all those big yellow things are all the brassicas that are re-sprouting so i'll just uh, broadcast my clover and crush all that down and spray it today as well but this will be just a video on the corn i'll probably have a separate video on that we'll see how this turns out All right, you can see I just finished up and I hardly used any of that seed. And uh, when you're doing this corn, throwing it out by hand, if you've ever broadcasted beans by hand, I know a lot of people just use like a broadcast seeder or like an ATV broadcast seeder or something. But I, I like to broadcast all my soybeans by hand. It really doesn't take that long. I mean, with a bucket, and you could plant an acre in like 15, maybe 20 minutes tops. And with this corn, throwing it out by hand, all I'm doing is basically just taking like smaller handfuls and throwing it further. Where when I do beans, I take bigger handfuls and you know don't throw them as far. And when you throw them out, you can kind of see when they're spreading across the air and just look at them on the ground of how thick you are. You can see right here, got like two seeds there, one, two seeds there, another seed there two there I guess three right there and then like all this nothing there's there's one right there's one there's a little I put it a little thicker on the edge on purpose right here but there's two there's one there's nothing right here right here's one nothing nothing right there's one nothing here's three so, I mean, it's not going to be like maybe perfect spacing like rows, but it's going to be pretty good, I think. This is look, this looks about right to me. So I'm going to do the sweet corn next. And I'll, then I'll fill this stuff in. Here you can see all the seeds. Pretty good spacing. Maybe a little thick in certain areas, but like right here, there's nothing. Until you get to right here, right here, a couple here. This is one pass with a disc. Nothing is exposed. Either season. like believe it or not this is the first time i've been out here since planting so um i should have probably came out 
you know, earlier because you can see a lot of this has been, well, some, that's all munched off from deer. But I saw a couple in here that looked like they'd just recently been pulled out. And there was probably a ton more that got pulled out a long, long time ago. Um, you can see a lot of weeds are coming. This is obviously Nutri-Crave corn, so I won't be able to spray this. So it's probably gonna turn into a weedy mess. It's not nearly as thick as what it should be. Um, yeah, I probably should have came out here earlier and, and broadcasted a bunch of corn on top of the soil like I do in, in a lot of my better areas. And then, you know, the birds and the turkeys or whatever, the, dirt, the birds will just eat the shelled out corn. Not Then they don't have to pull up, you know, the plants and kill them. And then obviously, like I said, there's a, definitely some deer damage in here. So it'll be interesting to see how this turns out considering I'm not gonna spray this at all. Maybe just hand pull a couple dozen weeds here and there and that's about the only weed control this is gonna get. But yeah, I mean, you could see in certain areas, like I got two plants here. This must be an area where less of them got pulled out or something. You, you know, you could see, and plus, like I said, we haven't, we didn't get any rain. So you could see, um, there's some bigger ones and then there's some obviously smaller ones like this that haven't been popped up out of the ground as long. We didn't get any moisture for probably three weeks after planting this or maybe even close to four. So yeah, you can see like this one right here just recently got pulled up out of the ground. See that? There's The birds are still trying to pull these things up. So there was probably a ton that got pulled up and eaten when they were like that size or, or smaller. So look at right there's a culprit. One of them probably. God darn it. Should have came out here a long time ago and broadcasted some like I said. Right here's another one or maybe that's just from getting munched on by deer probably from this plant or something. Yeah it'll be interesting to see how this turns out I guess. Well, right here is the broadcast Nutri-Crave corn. I ended up going through here and doing a pretty good job weeding it. I didn't say I was going to, um, I didn't really want to have to go through here and hand pull and hoe out all the weeds, but I ended up doing it because it, it looked like it was going to really turn out nice, you know, the, the seeding rate I had in here. And I'm glad I went through here and weeded, a lot, re weeded out a lot of this stuff. There was a lot of, mainly just velvets. Right here's a couple, but... Um, yeah, this stuff's turning out real nice. Like I said, it's probably a little bit thin, but I wanted this to be thinner instead of thicker because you leave it a little bit more open. You can clearly see the deer have been walking through here a little bit already. If you broadcast corn too thick, the deer don't even want to really walk in it because they can't. It's just like a tangled jungle. And uh, you can see this stuff is just starting to pollinate. Um, we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow. That's really going to help this pollination phase. It's starting to get a little drier, but... Um, you can see a lot of these plants in here have two ears per plant. And that's just simply due to because how thin it's planted. I'd say this stuff is probably... Uh, probably at least nine to nine and a half. The tallest ones. Yeah, I... Man, almost now that I look at it, almost every plant in here has got two ears. And some of them are slightly behind, like this one... Um, we had a little bit of scattered uh, germination rate. That's not what you really want. You want all the corn to come up at once so everything's pollinating at the same time. But we had probably about half of it come up right away and the other half came up, I don't know, two, three weeks later. That's why only half of them in here have tassels on. And like these ones, the tassels are a little bit behind. The corn almost caught up really though, but man, it, it popped, out of the, popped out of the ground, like I swear to God, three weeks after a lot of the other stuff maybe that's what some of this is see how short this stuff is right here i don't know you can see the deer have been munching on this a little bit when you see these ears like this with no tassel that means a deer came through here and chomped it off a couple times probably when it was shorter there's a couple of them in here like that on this side these might not um grow the best cobs but yeah this is just a tiny little test plot right here this is, the deer don't really winter on this small property, so that's why I didn't really plant a whole lot of corn. I'd be surprised actually if they ate up all this. This is barely a, this is probably a sixth of an acre. It's not even a quarter acre of corn. 
and look at got a whole soybean field that way soybeans that way the nearest cornfields right over there across the road so thankfully there's that corn for the coons to eat i mean if that was all beans i'm sure this would be a lot of coon damage in here um i was actually expecting a little bit of coon damage i don't see any yet hopefully we don't get any because this is a small spot like i said um yeah look at how all, all these ones on the edge right here are all munched on this is all from deer you can see all the old deer tracks through here and there's all the old leaves that they bit off. So, some of this stuff probably won't do the best. Oh, right here, just a quick look at my brassicas. Put in some brassicas out here next to the pumpkins because these pumpkins are so far behind. They came up like three to four weeks late, like I said. Didn't get any rain. Look at all the deer tracks right here, man. Um, yeah, so... You can grow broadcasted corn. Look at the size of this velvet. I should mention this is no fertilizer here and look at how good this corn looks. Look at how good these weeds look. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this should, this should last the deer a while. Um, look at this shriveled up corn here on the edge. I mean, it's not even close to any trees. It's not even really I guess it's getting south shade from this corn, but it's pretty much the sun straight in the uh, in the sky in the summer. It's pretty crazy how shriveled up and short this stuff is on the edge here. I've noticed that when the ground doesn't get properly tilled, worked as much, um, the corn really actually struggles. I mean, this is, right here is a bunch of um, perennial thistles. So that's telling me that this area didn't get plowed up quite as good as it should have been and disked up probably as much as the center where it got plowed better probably maybe that the ground was packed here more and maybe that's why it's just lacking moisture i've seen that in multiple areas where i have not tilled the ground as much this this corn actually really um slows down its growth in those areas but yeah for the most part turned out pretty good um like i said don't broadcast your corn too thick you want thinners actually you don't want too thin you want about like this it's about the perfect, where you can almost walk through it like a corn maze. You could see a lot of this corn in here. When you look down here, it almost looks like there was three plants that sprouted up right there. But in all reality, it was probably just one seed. I've noticed that when you plant corn on the super low populations like this, it, send, it, it tends to uh, send up these side suckers. And sometimes you'll get these side ones to produce a cob. And sometimes they don't. You can see right here's the main plant with the tassel. You got two ears coming here. These ones are just kind of just green growth. A lot of times they don't really produce much. But yeah, this one, like a lot of them in here. And this one's got a second side shoot right here. Just kind of interesting when you see that on these super low population uh, corn stands like this. And you get to a little thicker spot, like right in here. This is all just singular, singular plants. So in all reality, the whole area should probably be planted like this, but you start getting, you know, these broadcasted areas like this, the deer don't really want to walk through this wall of corn. They like this maize and pocket open um, area right here. You can see there's clearly walking through here more, but you want to plant the corn thick enough where it'll at least pollinate and you'll get good ears. You know, you don't want to plant too thin. So, all right, that's enough talk. Um, I got a few other corn videos to get out. I got a no-till corn video coming. Um, yeah, there's definitely some corn and soybean videos out. I got to get out yet before my Brassica videos. So, yeah, thanks for watching.